This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, saving your day from boredom with the best podcasting entertainment. What's up? What's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with fellow man child Johnny Carlin. What's up, dub dub? Or for this one, should you be saying, uh, you have forgotten the face of your father? You're right. You've forgotten the face of your father. Our, what's the whole thing? The um, I do not aim with my eye. For a for one who aims with his eye has forgotten the face of his father. I aim with my hand, or I aim with my flip it. I do not aim with my hand. I aim. I do not aim with my hand. For the person who is um, aims with his hand, hand forgot forgot the, the face, face of, of his, his father. father. I aim, aim with, with my, my eye. eye. I that, do not shoot with my hand. For those who, who shoot with, with their hand, hand have, have forgotten, forgotten the face of their father. father. I, I shoot, shoot with, with my, my mind. mind. And I do not kill, kill with my gun, because the man who's killed with his gun, gun has forgotten the face of his father. father. I kill, kill with my heart. heart. We got it. We got Woo! it. And if you haven't noticed, we saw The Dark Tower yep. this weekend. Matthew McConaughey. All the, right, all right, all right. Idris, that, Idris Elba, who uh, apparently Dave and I, we had this conversation after we recorded yeah. the Bond topic of, I just thought, you know what, African-American. And then Dave's like, but he's not American. And I went... Fuck, what is he? Like, kind of like, a, well, what do we call him? Someone in the comment section even said, well, he's not African American. We had that conversation, just so you know, yeah. right after we recorded <laughs> the same conversation someone brought up, we had about Idris Elba. And this was a movie, Johnny, coming in. Yeah. I had no expect. Like, th- when I say no expectations, I mean, like, for Valerian and Loreline, I have at least read one graphic novel. Exactly. When we come into any of the Marvel or DCs, I've got so much background knowledge. This was the first movie that I had gone into in a long time to where I was just like, huh, okay, got, let's just go see a movie. Like, I got I, nothing to work with. I've got no background knowledge. And that coming in, I don't know if that made me like the movie more than if someone who actually read the books and knew what was going on ahead of time. That's very true. Um, I've never read the books either, so I have, was in the same place you were. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was the same place as Valerian. Yeah. Um, I had no background knowledge. I had no, no, so like I'm like fresh from this movie mm-hmm. in the aspect of I had nothing to expect besides what you guys showed me in the previews. Mm-hmm. And that was, again, all of I saw. And also, if you are new to the Rick and Johnny podcast and how we do movie reviews we're gonna start with kind of a non-spoiler mode usually about between like five seven ten minutes at the so most five to ten minutes and then we kind of go into spoiler mode get into the movie and then at the end we'll give our mvp or what we call the show stealer yep. award and then we will also give our rating at the end for the movie and just kind of my non-spoiler thoughts of this one okay it was a movie that to me although it had good parts of it mm-hmm. like I liked Idris Elba's character I liked the main character um the little kid um chambers um, yeah why can't... I liked uh his character and Elba McConaughey was good in the villain role but at the same time I'm thinking this was more of our MVP. I was like, ah, I don't know if he's Tom done Taylor, enough. Jake Chambers, by the way. Jake Chambers. Um, and Matthew McConaughey was solid as the villain. Yeah. However, there were things in this movie that I did not like that we'll get into in the spoiler mode. Yeah. A few tropes. There was the the one that I will say that I don't know. That this is the patent, Ricky. I don't know if it's spoilery or not, but mm-hmm. I'll say it anyways. The main problem I had with this movie yeah. was that I felt like it took too long to get to Elba's character. It took too long to get there. However, once we got there, it was like, boom, okay. Yeah. Now, like, everything before is like, so when are, we, when are we getting to Idris Elba's character? But really, that to me was the only big criticism that I had for this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I liked it. I liked everything overall with that. Um for me, it's not uh, it's not like when we get into Idris' character. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm waiting for that because I know that character. I know that actor. Mm-hmm. But it's more of a, um, okay, um, take the introduction as it is and see where they're going with it. That's what I like. It's it's a ride. We don't know where. Yeah. We don't know the storyline. Like we, we didn't have any background knowledge so coming in. You, you just get to go along for the ride for once. Mm-hmm. And well, I mean, you do. We I got to on Valerian. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, for this one, we really did get to 
go in for the ride. But yeah, that was the only thing. The thing that I found the most interesting about it without kind of going into sport, because this might be the only review because we don't have a lot of background knowledge. Yeah. This might be the shortest non-spoiler mode that we do because eventually I think we're going to have to get into spoiler mode yeah. before we do this. It was interesting to me because the um, Jake Chambers character, yeah. the little child, um, my computer died, so you have the actor's name in front Tom of you. Taylor. Right? Tom Taylor. Tom um, Taylor. His character, it was interesting that I don't remember in the trailer, but I don't remember seeing him. Or if I did, it wasn't anything I focused on. And to have him be the main character that I'm first, well, secondly introduced to, because you're introduced to McConaughey's character first. Yeah. Being introduced to his character and having him be the main character throughout, one of the main characters throughout, kind of caught me off guard to where I was yeah. like, okay, okay, I thought this was an Idris Elba movie, but okay, I guess we're getting this kid thrown at us. Yeah, I think it's, th- I would say in this movie, there's three main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, the top one would be Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey. The top, the top ones for I thought it was more focused on Tom Taylor than anyone. No, but I'm saying like out of the three, in no particular order. It's oh, McConaughey, yeah. Yeah. Elba, and Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, no, no, I, in no particular yeah. order. It's Idris Elba, uh, Matthew McConaughey, mm-hmm. and Tom Taylor. You're right. There, but in this movie, there are three main characters. Yeah, and this is without getting into spoilers. Maybe at the beginning, it's Taylor and McConaughey are the two. But then Alba comes in. He starts below McConaughey, but swi- shortly swiftly comes s- just to second. S- goes right into that second. Yeah. Maybe even number one towards the end. It's it's a really uh, towards mm-hmm. the end. It's really close. Yeah. But to me, the whole movie is about Tom Taylor mm-hmm. for the most part. And this was also a movie that, like storyline, loved it so much more than like me and you even talked about this when it came to the story. Yeah. The reason why I had a more favorable attitude afterwards Mm -hmm. compared to, like, what we just saw in Valyrian. Yeah. The story in this was solidly, like, when I say solidly written, it was good. It was was. solid to where it was like, okay, there are some things that I don't like that I'm going to get into into spoiler mode. Yeah. But there are definitely things here that I'm like... It's not anywhere near what we were talking about with Valyrian. Yeah. Where with Valyrian, no. it was like, where is this story? It's, I never at, I never at any Valerian time. Valyrian was stagnant. There were a few times where I'm like, boom, I got it. And I'm going to get into the big one in spoiler mode. Is yeah. there anything, actually, is there anything that you want to talk about non-spoilery? No, honestly, I think we need to spo- start yeah, spoiling we, we this. we got to get into this. We need we to start spoiling it or else you guys are going to get really bored of us. My number one thing, though, before we go in yeah. to spoiler mode is I love the gun scenes. The scenes with Elba fight, like shooting the gun. There was one where he, he's in this gunfight and how he reloads the guns, just rolls them along his belt and just... And then he's yeah. back to firing. And how, like, the special effects of him, like, there was one where he took a, like, handful of bullets, threw it in the air, went, do, 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 shink, and then went like this, clip reloaded the bullets while they were falling, and then do, 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 back to shooting. Yeah. Like, and the guns, when we had them, the gunfight scenes were amazing. But oh, they were. We have, that's the last thing I wanted to say. For non spoiler we, we I gotta, feel it's a kind of spoiler we gotta get a little bit. Spo- it, 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 for us, we've seen the movie, but for them, they haven't. But Yeah, that's what I'm is, saying. It's a little bit spoilerish this, right there. This is where we're going into a kind of big spoiler mode. So if yeah. you have not seen the movie, go ahead and hit pause. Go and see the movie. Come back. If you don't care, just watch all the way through because we are going to be entering spoiler mode. But now we're jumping into spoiler mode, yes. Johnny. And the first thing I want to touch on in spoiler mode is basically the fact of what did Ricky not like about this film? Of because course. I kind of wanted to say it non-spoiler mode, but let's be honest. I didn't want to give anything away. Yeah. This movie, with like going back to the story, mm-hmm. with how I liked the story, there were things I did not like about it. This of was course. probably the first movie I have ever seen to where the trope of weak, weak mother who had lost her original um, husband. husband cannot stand up 
to the stepfather, the trope of stepfather who hates the son and wants to get rid of him at any cost. Even like it just kind of exploiting the the kids crazy. Oh, he went as to far as saying, like, "If you don't go, if you don't go with these people, I'm going to drag you drag down, you down the stairs." Sense. Where, I, okay, I'm going to level with you. Yeah, I'm going to level. This is the first time I've probably said this to our fans as well. The reason why that whole trope mm-hmm. doesn't really sit well. Well, I don't want to say sit well because it's not like I'm upset about it, but why I'm not used to that. Yeah is because I grew up with my mother, and my mother was the one where if you mouthed off to her or if anyone said anything that was, like, rude to her, she was not afraid to speak her mind. And if, like, she was the mother in this film, oh, man, if if she had a stepfather, like, if I had a stepfather and he said, you're going to go or I'm going to drag you down the stairs, my mom would be fucking killed. Like, he'd be dead. He'd be dead because he'd threatened to put a hand on me in any way so that's where my kind of like and i'm sitting there going you know what this has never bothered me before but for some reason in this film it bothers me and i don't know why it bothered me there like i didn't know in that sense where i'm like it was just one of those things where i looked at it and went do we have to go through this again do we have to go through this kind of it's a very generic thing for movies yes but like i said in other movies where i've seen it had never bothered me. Maybe it's because we're starting to actually, like you and me, go out and review movies. Yeah. So I'm starting to think a little bit more critically about movies than I have, like, in the past. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was just something where that was one of the big things where I'm like, did that really need to be there? Like, Mm -hmm. could you have done it a different way? I'm not saying change, because usually that's a big thing I do, what I would change. Yeah, Ricky changes everything in movies. I just didn't like it. It didn't sit well. You know what? Me. I feel like ha- that father having that attitude, even though it was mm-hmm. a little over the top for my taste, mm-hmm. I, I can, but I'm not going to say anything because that is a reality for some yeah. people. Um, it was a little over the top for my taste mm-hmm. uh, how like, how much it was. He mm-hmm. was a stone cold. He was like a step away from having the wife beater in an alcohol bottle in his hand. He's just one step away from that. Mm -hmm. And she was almost as if she was like, the makeup was almost as if he did slap her around Mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. But that's the thing. I mean, I understand that is a reality for Mm -hmm. some people. And it's a horrible thing. Yeah. Um, That was a little too much for my taste in Mm -hmm. the movie and how hard it was, but it also moved the movie along. It did. Because let's put it this way. If the stepfather had been- They would have never called the people to come in and take him away. If the stepfather had been a kind stepfather and loved the kid and Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, stuff wouldn't happen. I get why it it was there. Yeah. I'm just saying the whole trope thing. A little over the top, basically. It it never bothered me in a movie until I saw this one. Yeah, no. Yeah. Maybe it was just like a, I've seen this before. Why am I watching it again? Yeah, no. It it is. Mm -hmm. It's a very... um, easy thing for movies to do Mm -hmm. it's a very easy stereotype that's what i'm trying to think of it's a very easy stereotypical Mm -hmm. situation to go with in a movie and it i I just have to say i mean i it was a little over the top for me Mm -hmm. but it moves the movie along but that also leads me into my second point yeah and that second thing is because of that it got me thinking huh this movie, the through the most of the movie, after the beginning, mm-hmm. I kept thinking to myself, this movie does not know what it wants to be. Like, genre-wise, Again. does not want to know what it wants to be. Because let's be honest. Explain. When we see that trope, yeah. it's not usually... Like, sometimes we see it in serious movies, mm-hmm. but sometimes we also see it in that kind of, like, that buddy cop kind of role, where it's like the kid... That friends an older male, and at first they don't like each other. Yeah, and then by the end of the journey, it's like, man, I'm like a fa- I'm you're like the father I never had, even though they never said that exactly in this film. Mm-hmm. That's the role that this one took, where Chambers meets Elba, and Elba's like, get out of here, like get out of here, I don't want anything to do with you. And then by the end of the film, they both defeat Matthew McConaughey, and it's like, oh. He's he's got all this power and he's got the shining as they call it. The sh- yeah, the shining is yeah. what they called it. At the end, you kind of saw like, oh man, Idris Elba lost his father, and that was the big thing of why he was so upset at the beginning. And now he's like a father to this little kid, the true father that this kid 
didn't have because his dad died and I want to say it was they vaguely referenced it that he died in a fire. He's a firefighter Vague, that died in a fire. Vaguely like there was not much background well, on the original dad. The newspaper clippings showed yeah. firefighter mm -hmm. in an article about him as a firefighter going to try and save people in a fire. Yeah. He, it's a firefighter that died in a fire. Yeah, basically is what they gave you and that's what I like I thought that this movie, the trailers that I saw, yeah. sold me a different movie. Like, let's be honest. I wasn't upset in the fact, like, oh, man, I thought I was getting a total different movie. What the hell was this shit? No, I wasn't like that. But I was sitting there thinking, the movie that you sold me in the trailers was vastly different than the movie when I got there. Yeah. Because they kind of were trying to sell it, in my mind, in the trailer – trying to sell it as that action, more action-based, showing more of the Elba gunslinging, the Elba slide, and then showing, like, Matthew McConaughey knowing that there's um, that dark kind of villain. I get marketing-wise, mm -hmm. you want to throw those two out there. Yeah. Because if you threw Jake Chambers on there, most people would look and go, who the hell is that? Yeah. Like, of course, you're going to put Elba and McConaughey to get people to go see your film. I just thought a little bit of, hmm, the trailer sold me a movie that I'm not quite sure if it was a true representation of what I saw. Okay. I can only kind of agree with you on how that buddy cop thing was because it's mm -hmm. not that he didn't like the kid. It's like, I well, I mean, right in the beginning, I don't know who the hell you are. Yeah, no, but it but, was that sense of like, get away from me. I don't uh, want to be by you. I didn't get thing. that as much as, um, hey, you know what? I'll take you with me, but I'm dropping you. At first, it's like seemed more like I'm gonna drop you off this village. Mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a loner. It's not that he didn't like him, but because he's like he spilled his backstory pretty quickly. Well, I'm because the kid knew it. Part of it. I'm saying before that. Yeah. When he first met him, Elba said, "Get out of here." Yeah. But then he kept following. And how many times in that kind of a movie have you seen they first meet? Get out of here. I don't know. You have nothing to do. And the kid just keeps pestering well, and pestering and pestering. To me, it's pestering. more along the lines of he said, get out of here because mm -hmm. he didn't. He had no idea who this person was. Yeah. Some person randomly shows up at his campsite. Oh, I'm not drinks saying his he water. wouldn't. Exactly. I'm well, not I saying mean, he shouldn't. I'm just saying it fits into the whole arc of what that kind of a movie is. But I feel more. It's less like um, that general, that, that generic mm -hmm. story arc of I don't like you. We're starting to get along. Mm -hmm. We're buddy buddy now. It's more of, uh, who the hell are you? And then like just jumps st straight to kind of okay, whatever. I'm gonna take care of you for now, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop you off at wherever the closest village was, where the sage was. The sage, yeah, because, uh, yeah, because he wanted to find out if he, he was telling the truth. Well, not just that. Well, not just that. He already knew that. He knew mm -hmm. this cuz the kid knew his, part of his uh, a chunk of his backstory already. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you you know about me. Then uh, I'm going to drop you off because I'm a loner and I'm doing this myself. Mm -hmm. And then it just happened like they then he became the father figure by the end of the movie. Yeah. Which I I you're, like I to me you're half right about it. the, the blueprint half. is there. It doesn't the follow it 100% but the blueprint is there enough to where I was like, eh, it wasn't the exact kind of move. Like my bigger, my bigger grief isn't on that blueprint. Yeah. That's a part of it. It's more so, like I said, watching the trailer and you guys can go watch them now. I did not get the sense that the trailer was selling me the movie that I saw. No, that's true. I mean, I'm looking at one of the trailers now just a little bit and mm -hmm. this one... Actually, does have him in it though? Um, the kid, the kid, um, with little scenes here and there, but mm -hmm. a lot of it focused on um, the gunslinging mm -hmm. to me. And, and what you got it for a little, you got it for a little bit in the village where he had a. Um, when you looked over at me and you were like, "That was awesome." When he was like, real slow, just sitting there listening to everything, and then it's just like pop and shoots them from like yards away you know what they reminded me of huh. league of extraordinary gentlemen oh yeah well, sean connery sean connery sean connery's character because he would do the Too same thing shoon. he would do the same thing where it would like he'd sit there with the gun yeah and he'd just sit there and then and 
would shoot the guy from like yards away. Too soon, but that was bloody close. Yeah. But that's what I got during that scene. That scene, we got the gun slinging because obviously they were attacking the town. Yeah. And then the very end. Yeah. Like, I It was felt a phenomenal scene. Phenomenal end, but it's like, give me, could, could you have not given me a little bit more of that? Right? No, there's, I wish there was more especially of it in there like for that. The, especially for the trailers that you fed me. Yeah. Where that was what you were banking on. There just wasn't enough of it. Like No, I, there the, should have been more of it. I'm not saying the story was bad, because if you're asking me, Ricky, which story are you liking, Valyrian or Dark Tower? I'll take Dark Tower. Yeah. But it's just the trailer didn't sell me the movie that I went ahead and saw. Besides that, there were things about this movie I liked. Yeah. I just wanted to get the stuff I didn't like out, out of the way. The way. First. One of the things I liked... The gun shooting, the gun oh, slinging, man. I should gun say. Gun slinging, exactly. Like I said, the loading the guns on the belt, the way they oh, zoomed man. in on that. Yeah, like just it goes along the mm-hmm. belt. He got, he grabs, or sorry, he steals that belt mm-hmm. from uh, the ammo store yeah. and just like pushes them all in as he's rolling it along his waist. It yeah. was amazing. And now he's like throwing bullets in the air and catching them in the gun. How even in the end scene when he's fighting McConaughey's character. Yeah. How he's ricocheting bullets off of the off of metal stuff to try to shoot him, and how at the end he shoots one and then ricochets the bullet before McConaughey can catch it to where it actually shoots him in the heart. Yeah, phenomenal. Lo- then, love the gunslinging and the action. And then movie. he went bench it, like uh, shot him like five times after that. Yeah, once well, he in had the to heart. Kill him. He had Made to kill sure him. he's dead, and then he shot one him right, right here in the head. head. Well, he had Got, to make sure. Make sure. Had to make sure he was dead. Double tap. Really hit. Because McConaughey's... <laughs> I actually liked McConaughey's character. In all right, the all villain. right, all right. There was a... I'm going to let them in on this joke. There's yeah. a scene... If you guys have seen it, you know. The scene where he says to the one, oh, man, you get a pretty face, you can go anywhere in this world. I was just expecting him to go, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right. Or, Best best thing about these, what did they even say? What they called them? Um, Were I, they ghouls? Were they? Uh, I, best thing about the faceless, they keep getting. I keep getting older. They stay the same age. Oh no, I was more so going along the lines of that. Is they keep changing faces. I stay the same age because mm-hmm. he was the same age when Idris Elba was young, mm-hmm. and it had, his father was still alive. Yeah, well, he doesn't age. No, exactly. A sorcerer He's who a doesn't sorcerer. age. Sorcerer. His magic, though, I like. It was it was. I want to say hilarious, just at how he used it. Yeah. Like, even when he was at the the um, interrogating the two that let Chambers get away. Oh yeah. He's like, kill each other. Kill each other. Don't worry, don't worry, folks. It'll all be okay, and just calms everyone down. Yeah. Or like the part where he goes, "Stop breathing." Right. And he does that boom, twice. Pers- and it's, it was. A- well, he tells. Elba's father, stop breathing. Allstate guy, by the way. Stop Allstate breathing. Sand. Too bad he didn't have Allstate. I know, um, right? But that's really car insurance, isn't it? Car and home. I think All so. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they have health. Um, but then to the stepfather, he just goes, drop dead. Yeah. And just boom, on the floor. Oh, no. He also does stop breathing. Does he? He's like, stop breathing, just drops on the floor. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, goes, talks, talks to the mother and... I will say that part of it. Oh man! This this movie, and the thing that I liked with it is my biggest. Like I'm comparing it to Valerian only because that's the last one we saw. Yeah. The one thing we said about Valerian was that it was too predictable, way too predictable. We knew what was coming. Yeah. At least this film, there were some stuff where I'm like, you predicted some stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, I kind of had a feeling they were going to get him at the village or track him at the village. Yeah. I kind of had a feeling that, like, when they were at the gun store, something would go wrong. Yeah, exactly. But the one thing, or even, like, when the when he first meets the people that are going to take him away and she introduces herself, I kind of knew, like, okay, they're evil. Yeah, they're exactly. on the other side. The one thing that they did that I didn't, un- like, I didn't expect coming was the death of the mom. Oh, yeah. No, I was Didn't not... expect it. Like, I thought he would just take her, kidnap her, the kid would want to get her back, and it's like, hey, you let me use you for what I want to do. Your mother lives. She's okay. Exactly. But instead, he disintegrates her, which is basically McConaughey's character 
being a oh what what's the word I want to use? He's he's an asshole, of course. He's mm-hmm. a bad guy. But it's oh, what's the word I'm looking for? He basically took the big thing. It's like, how did your father die? Oh wait, that's right. I'm gonna do the same thing to your mom, but I'm gonna let you see the ashes. Yeah. Well, not just that. He put a nice little smiley face on the wall too, and said hello there. Yeah. Oh my god, complete asshole moment. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I'm not even sure that's deemed as asshole anymore. It's like some level more of a douchebag. That, that's like some level of kind of, sociopath. Sociopath sounds yeah. about right. A little bit worse <laughs> than that. A little bit psychopath in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of the great villains though, or are if you're not a psychopath and a sociopath. Yeah. yeah. That's usually what. If makes you're not a, a combination villain. of the two, you're not that great of a villain. Yeah. So that's exactly it. <laughs> but like even that, like and he was using the ashes to do that, right? He took her own ashes. And wrote hello there with the smiley face. He may face. have. I didn't even think about that. What else would he write with, Johnny? Yeah. No, I, I just, just thought about that. Oh, what he else a, would he write He's a sorcerer, with? though. I know. So who knows? Really, like, if you really want to get to the kid. Yeah. And that's another reason why Taylor, Yeah. The that scene alone sold me on his acting. Oh, yeah. How he I was able agree. to, I felt actually like act he like actually his lost was, his mom. Exactly. No, he acted like he actually lost his mother. Mm-hmm. And that was phenomenal Which I acting, wasn't, I wasn't especially expecting. from someone that young. I wasn't expecting it, to be honest. Yeah. Was not. And I mean, one of the opposites of like what, uh, something I wasn't able to predict mm-hmm. was like when the demon in the house, the wood demon, yeah. kind of had him and he said, stop. And it stopped. Exactly. I was like, that's kind of weird. And like, I'm guessing in my head, but I never guessed that it was... The Shining or anything. Yeah, no, I... I, I just w- thought it was maybe the demon thought he was McConaughey. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Or like I he said think. the magic word. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Like, I, I, would, I was like, why did it mm-hmm. stop? And I, did, I had no idea. Like, oh, he has super psychic powers from yeah. the Shining thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, wow. Okay. that's I would never have guessed that's the reason the, the, mm-hmm. the house stopped attacking him. Yeah. No, I... Did not either. I mean, this film... He killed the house demon. This film, before we get into, because, I mean, looking at everything else, I don't know if there's anything... Is there anything else that you really want to hit? I feel like... No, I've hit basically everything This was I wanted to talk about. Oh, that was something that was really weird to me. Yes. How they opened it with the kids and, like, the eh, 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 and then basically on the watches, it's like, well, fuck, it's my turn. Yeah. And then they go into the um, cylinder. What a weird way to start off the movie. Not that weird, was weird. Not actually. weird is like bad, but just weird is like I couldn't get my footing right away. It's like what made me ask questions right off the bat. Which I guess you kind of want maybe yeah. in the beginning of a movie, mm-hmm. which is good to have because it's like, what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. And then eventually you find out, oh, shit, that's what's going on. And I like. I like the theory, not the theory of, I liked how they set up the universe of basically, you know what? This is a map. Whatever happens in my world happens in your world. Yeah. And our worlds are all together in this circle. We're all in the circle. And this, if the dark tower gets attacked, there's an earthquake on your world. There's also an earthquake on my world Mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah. I like that they set it up. That way. Yeah, everything's connected in that mm-hmm. way. And everything inside there is being protected by something outside there, mm-hmm. which was a cool scene, too, yeah. to see one of the, something escape from there. Yes. And that was the, the amusement park. Yeah. Because even, like, um, Chambers even says, oh, it's an amusement park. And Elba's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that is. No one knows what these things are that are around These us. ancient ruins. And he goes, oh, it's an amusement park. Kind of like the... I told you, I I'm telling you, what, you it what it was. I'm telling you what it is. This is what it is kind of a thing. Yeah. But you're talking about the thing that basically injures him and stabs him here, tries to wrap around his neck. Yeah. And um, the best part about that scene is after they kill that thing, how he says to Chambers, he goes, I hit quick. It was brave reaching for the gun. Oh, that part. Yeah. yeah I thought that because right away I'm like, okay, this kid is... Th- I was thinking this kid's going to do something at the end in the mm-hmm. story because usually the characters that reach for the gun like that, that shows a trait towards it's like, okay, this character is a brave character. Yeah. They'll act on things and be able to use that later They, they, they have that hero quality yes, to them. Yes, that hero quality in that. I thought that when he said that, mm-hmm. when he was like, it was brave to reach for the gun. Yeah. 
No, I thought it cool too that um, I guess they made him a little more human than mm-hmm. uh, he was acting. Yeah. Because uh, he got stabbed by that thing, mm-hmm. and he got in, like he's like, oh, I heal quick. Yeah. And it wasn't. Then they show shortly after. It's mm-hmm. not healing very well. Well, even that I'm fast forwarding. Yeah. The hospital scene was the best. Oh, that was great. Where he's just like, no, I got to get out of here. Rip the IVs out. Here's a coin. Thank you. It's like <laughs> thanks they, for your service. They look at it like, what the fuck is this? I, I like, love I love the part where he's like they ask him a question he looks at the kid you and ready then the for kid a good answers time? and then he like and then he answers the question to them yeah yeah because they ask him um, now you're ready for a good time uh, can we join the party because he uh, gave him a bunch of uh, antibiotics and uh, mm-hmm. pain medicine yeah he took like, it's like just take a few just take oh, a no, few I'm right now about in the, the hospital. hospital oh in the hospital when I thought you were like, talking about the girls the do- on the bus no the doctors ask him a question he looks at the kid and the kid answers and there was a question that I couldn't remember what they an- he answered it looked at the kid and he, the kid's like he goes oh no 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 because <laughs> um, he said um, something wor- world earth what Keystone Earth Keystone Earth and he goes we don't call it Keystone Earth <laughs> yeah don't mention that. <laughs> But yes, the girls on the bus. I like uh, that one. You have forgotten that. I am going to use that from now on. Yeah, like if you've forgotten does, the face of your father. You have forgotten the face of your father. <laughs> someone acts up, you've forgotten the face of your father. Now here are here are some uh, some some Advil and stuff. Only take Andy took all of them. Yeah, Andy took all of them. What is this? What is this? It's sugar. I like it. I, <laughs> I, at that point, I wanted him to do a thought. I, I like it. it. I'll have another. That would have been a great kind of homage because he was he was he's Heimdall. He is Heimdall. So Holy it's like shit. <laughs> I would have loved if he did that. What is this? I'll have another <laughs> sugar. I like it. Another. He is. I, I didn't forgot about think that. About, I you? forgot about that. Yeah. But anything in spoiler mode that you want to talk about before we go on? into show stealer and review territory. No, I think we covered pretty much everything we need to talk about in this movie. But Johnny, that means we're going to move on into the end of the podcast. Yep. Basically, if you are new to this, how we end each movie review, like I said earlier, we give an MVP, which is our show stealer award, yes. and then we give our rating. rating. This one's going to be out of five bullets yep. for the rating. And Johnny, I'll let you go first. <laughs> Who's your show stealer? Who's the MVP? You know what? Um... It's MVP, very MVP is given an MVP. Yes, it's very close out of Idris Elba and Tom Taylor, mm-hmm. but I have to mainly because of that one scene where he lost his mother. I'm giving it to Tom Taylor. Really? Because that was probably. I remember after the movie, you told me you're like it's between those two, and I'm kind of like, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. And then you're like, let me sleep on it. And holy shit, you slept ha- on it. And I gave slept it to on him. it and I had to because I really like Idris Alba and mm-hmm. he did a really good job in mm-hmm. his role. But that just like that thing with Tom Taylor and mm-hmm. losing his mom and mm-hmm. making it seem so realistic that he actually seemed like he actually lost his mom mm-hmm. was like, that was phenomenal. It was and a powerful that, scene. It was a powerful scene and it kind of pushed him over the top. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, very close second, Idris Alba. I'm going to shock you. Yeah? Alba's my second. Alba's your second. Are you going to say McConaughey? Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey? All right, all right, all right. All right, oh, no. Only because I'm thinking all about right, it. All and right, all right. Although Alba yeah. was really good in this role, yeah. I would not say it's his best. No. I would not say it's his best performance, his best role. Okay. Looking at McConaughey, okay. what he was able to do, you're not used to seeing him in this kind of a role. And the way That's he true. played this villain, very villainy. Oh, he very, was extremely like, villainy. Like, this is not a Matthew McConaughey that I am used to seeing. Like, a very serious role from Matthew McConaughey. But because he's played, I don't want to say a douche character before, but mm-hmm. like, he's played that joking side of it. Yeah. He could bring that comedy side in. Which he th- did. Through the douchebaggery of the villain. Yeah. That's what he basically did. He he did bring that. He did bring the com- comedic douchebaggery. And out. just how Dude, I said like, that weird. You could tell like <laughs> douchebaggery. The best scenes that he had were when he was one on one. That's true. Like when he has that guy and the guy goes, Go to hell and he goes, Burn. And he just lights him on fire. Yeah. Or like his one on one with Elba where he's like, Face me and he's walking away and Elba shoots the gun. He goes, and just catches the bullet and starts playing with it. 
in his hand kind of a thing. That was interesting that he kept it. Yeah, he kept it because he pulled out the box yeah. and had the bullet in there. Or the scene between him and Elba in the gun shop. Or oh, okay. even him and his um, his lackeys, like the pretty face um, That's true. One, that was, that where was... it's like he grabbed her and it's like, and you're like, is he going to kill her? Yeah, after she kind of they screwed up. Mm-hmm. Burns that pretty face that he made a Burns comment about. right here. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed in the movie, mm-hmm. it got worse. It, it like, did. It was all pink, like, mm-hmm. all the way around here. Oh, as we got to the end, it got bigger. Yeah, it, it got huge. worse. But, I mean, yeah, just the way, even the scene with, like, I would say his best scene in the movie yeah. was when the parents come home, and he's, like, in there in the apron making dinner. We don't have chicken where I come from. We don't from. have chicken where I come from. And I'm, like, I'm sitting there going... Whole, like, holy shit, like, is he going to be nice to him before he kills him? Right. Is he, like, and now he's just, like, he says something to, to the stepdad and goes, stop breathing. Show me where these drawings are. Yeah, because, And no. just everything about that scene was just, like, you feared. You had genuine fear in you watching that. Yeah, no, well, I mean, you knew the stepfather was going to die because of his attitude right mm-hmm. off the bat with him. Yeah. Just, like, hey, you know what? Or like, who the hell are you? Get out of my house! Like basically, he it was his way of saying, "Shut the fuck up." Yeah, stop breathing. Yeah, <laughs> and just falls. I mean, floor. you you usually shut up if you stop breathing. Yeah, and I mean the the way I saw that, especially with like his, he's got a little bit of a southern southern like dash. Yeah, in dash his accent. southern drawl to it. He kind of always does though a little yeah. bit. Um, it kind of reminded me of like. And how he wore all black and was the man in black. Part of me was like, holy shit, he would be an amazing devil. Like, if, Satan, he, had to play, yeah. if he had to play the devil in something, this role proved like he could, he he could, could do it. Because, like, I got that little hint when he was, like, in the apron. Because, like, she was like, oh, my God, that's the one from his drawings. And he goes, stop breathing. Yeah. And just falls to the floor. Yeah, he's, he's my MVP. Kind of a little bit of a snub I feel bad for... Idris Elba, don't yeah. worry, he'll be Bond one day and be able to be the showstopper when we get him in a Bond movie. I yep. hope we do. I hope we get him in a James Bond movie. But, Johnny, yep, I'll go first because you gave the show stealer Thank one. You. We are rating it out of five bullets. Yes. My rating's a solid three out of five. Yep. Only because, yet again, like we said at the beginning, I came in with didn't read the books, didn't have any background knowledge, it wasn't an amazing movie. It wasn't a great movie. But, like, after I said to you guys after the movie, it was like, I wasn't disappointed. It was like, mm-hmm. all right, like, that was a pretty good movie. Like, yeah, there were things I didn't like about it. But if you asked me, like, after it comes out on DVD, hey, Ricky, you want to watch The Dark Tower? I'd be like, yeah, sure. I'll watch The Dark Tower. It was just a good movie. Yeah. And I'd give it a three out of five, kind of like that middle middle of the road slightly to the five of that middle. Mm-hmm. What about you? Going 3.5 out of five. Ooh, just got to up me a little bit. Well, I mean, it was better than Valyrian. I gave Valyrian a three. I gave it a 2.5. You did. I gave, I'm giving this three and a half bullets. So we're both basing it off of Valyrian. Nice to know. Yeah, I mean, I have to be fair and like, it was better than Valyrian. Yeah. I can't give it the same score as Valyrian. At least it wasn't the mummy. <laughs> At least it wasn't the mummy. Yeah. If you want to see a movie Ricky really hated, go go check out the Mummy review. Yeah, but go on, go on. No, 3.5. I mean three point five because I have to. Part of it, it was a good movie, and I have mm-hmm. to rate it better than a movie I didn't think was as good yeah. as it, which is Valerian. Valerian, I gave it three. Valerian had a lot more plot holes and a lot more things wrong with it than Dark Tower did. But overall, to me, Valerian was not as good as a movie, so I can't mm-hmm. give it the same score. Yeah. So three point five. Well, and this is where you guys come in. I want to know who your show stealer was, a.k.a. your MVP. And I want to know what you guys are rating this movie. Also, this is the first time I'm going to say this. Yes. If there are any movies that are coming out in the future that you want Johnny and I to review, leave them down below in the comment section. We want to do these for you guys. So if there are movies like, hey, if you guys say next week, I want you guys to go see the nut job too. 
We'll, we'll review the nut job. We'll have to too. review the nut job. Too. We, it looks like a good movie. It's got Will Arnett. Now, have you seen it's the job? Have Chan. you seen the first nut job? I have job? not. Well, Ricky's have got not. to watch the first nut job. Have man. you seen the first? Nut I have. Job? Really? Yeah. Didn't expect you to see the. Hey, first nut I mean, job. when you're bored enough on Netflix and nothing else is going on in Tennessee, you know, it's a movie that I have to see that I don't know who I'm going to go see it with because I don't know if you want to see it. Huh. The Emoji Movie. Okay. I kind of, I kind of want to see. I think Brandon's my in with that one. I think okay. Brandon said he'd go with me. I, I think it looks funny. I like T.J. Miller, too. We'll see about that. Johnny's like, nah. It, well, it already came out, too. Yeah, I know that's it did. Like, I, that's one where I'm like, I mean, if you I, want to do the emoji movie. Do I, wait for, do I wait for the DVD? Do I go and see it in theaters? But, yeah, if there's a movie that you guys want us to see, let us know down below in the comment section. Want to thank you guys for checking out our movie review. Make sure to click the playlist at the end of this movie. To check out all of our movie reviews. And we will be back. I want to say right now, we could be back next week. But right now, the one we're scheduled for yes. is two weeks. The Hitman Bodyguard. That's the one for yes. sure. But we could be back sooner with a movie review. Thank you guys for watching and or listening. And as always, have a good day, everybody. 